Hey, Cornerstone family. Well, they say that crisis clarifies mission, vision, and values. And I think that's true. In fact, oftentimes it's in the trials of life, in the crisis, that what is revealed in our hearts is that we've drifted in our mission, in our vision, in the things that we value. And perhaps this year is a year where God is inviting you and me, he's inviting us as a church to realign our hearts, our minds, our purpose with God's purpose, his mission. And for us as Cornerstone, it hasn't changed. It's simply this. We wanna be a people who make disciples who love God, love people, serve others, our city and beyond. We wanna make disciples, but it begins with us being disciples, being people who love God and love people, serve others, our city. We wanna be those kinds of people. And we together have kind of clarified what that looks like, the pathway to that discipleship, and it's this. It's grow, connect, serve, and share. We need to grow in a relationship with God by worship. We need to connect with one another as believers to be encouraged and edified. We need to serve those who God's put around us, and we need to share the love of Jesus, the good news, the gospel. That's the pathway. And so over the next several weeks, we're gonna be going into a, a series, 4KC. We wanna be about Kansas City, the Kansas City area. We want to be about those who God has put in our midst. We want to be people who love them, that serve them. And so we want to look at what this means for us to grow, to connect, to serve, to share. And so over these next several weeks, as we dive into the series, we're going to look at the book of First Peter, because Peter is one of those people in Scripture where we get the glimpse, a glimpse of his full humanity. He was such a bold person. He had bold faith, as we've been learning about. He was impulsive. And there's so many stories. In fact, this, this morning, today, Barry Dewey in, in the 120 Prayer Team devotional talks about one of the stories of Peter. It's amazing, about Peter's denial. But there's another story where Peter shows us that he was somebody that didn't safely follow Jesus, but he riskily followed Jesus. Don't you want to be that kind of person? That's where the adventure is. Not when we safely follow Jesus, but when we riskily follow him. And he writes this letter to the church where he is inviting believers who are going through persecution and crisis to remember who they are and whose they are, to call them back onto mission. And there's one passage in particular at the beginning of his letter that says this. It's First Peter 1 verses 6 and 7. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials or crisis. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Crisis and trials have a way of purifying our faith, of calling us back into the mission that God has for us. And it begins with us, not safely following Jesus, but riskily following him. And the great story in, in the Gospels of Peter's life where we see this, and there's so many of them, but one of them, the one that comes to mind, the one that captured my imagination as a kid is when Peter walked on water. It's an amazing story. It, it's recorded in the Gospel of Matthew chapter uh, 14. And you see this moment where Peter becomes a water walker and he steps out. And rather than playing it safe, he risks. And even though he experiences failure there, he also experiences the grace of Jesus. And his faith is, is purified. It's, it's bolstered. And as a result, he's a different person. He's encountered Jesus for who he is. And so let me read the story to us because I think it's a good, um, just an entry into this series we're gonna be launching into. So this is Matthew chapter uh, 14. And this is after Jesus fed the 5,000. He sends the disciples across the lake. He goes and prays. And in the middle of the lake, a massive storm about 3 a.m. Uh, begins to rock the boat. And this is how the story goes. It says this, The boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves. And the way one translator puts it, the, the boat was tormented by the waves. That's how big they were. For the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night around 3 a.m., he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, 
take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Those words, do not be afraid, appear about 365 times in the Bible. One of the most repeated commands, because that's what Jesus is inviting us. He's inviting us not to be afraid because he's in charge. And the way that we don't live a life of safety following Jesus, but a life riskily following him is this. It's two things. We got to get out of the boat and we need to go to Jesus. That's it. Get out of the boat and go to Jesus. That's what we see here in Peter. Because it's in this moment that Peter has this harebrained idea thinking, if my master, if my Lord is out there on the water, that's where I want to go. But I got to get out of the boat to get there. I want to be a water walker. And maybe that's what Jesus is inviting us to, to be people who can walk on water by riskily following him into the things that he's inviting us to. Don't you want that? That's what we want as the people of God. But we got to get out of the boat. We got to get out of our safety and our security. And we need to begin to take those steps where God is leading us. And I don't know what those steps are for you. I don't know what he's calling you to do. Maybe it's to reach out to those that you haven't reached out to for a while. Maybe it's to forgive somebody you haven't forgiven in your heart and you know you need to. Maybe it's being generous and you know you're holding things back from other people. But God's inviting you to be generous with your time, with your resources. I don't know what that looks like for you. I think it looks like something different for each of us, but he's inviting us to step out of the boat. I like the way one pastor and writer writes. He says this, I believe there is something, someone inside of us who tells us there is more to life than sitting in the boat. You were made for something more than merely avoiding failure. There is something inside you that wants to walk on the water, to leave the comfort of routine existence and abandon yourself to the high adventure of following God. So let me ask you a very important question. What's your boat? Your boat is whatever represents safety and security to you apart from God himself? It's a great question, a probing question. What is your boat? What is the safety that you're holding on to, the security that brings you the comfort that you think you need? Because what Peter knew is rather than getting the safety he thought the boat would bring, he knew there was a safer place. He knew there was a more secure place and it was where Jesus was. And so he steps out of the boat. The story continues, it goes like this. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He realizes he needs to ask God. He needs to come before him and pray for wisdom and discernment. Lord, if this is you, would you lead me there? And then he goes on. He said, come. Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. But Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying, to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Peter had a risky faith. He stepped out. Even though there was failure there, he trusted himself to Jesus. In the midst of his failure, he cries out, and Jesus comes with eyes of love and compassion and grace and grabs hold of him. And he even in this moment rebukes him, but he does it gently, not in front of everybody else, but just between him and Peter. Why do you have such little faith? And he restores him. And here's what we have to see in this passage. If you're gonna remember anything, it's this. It is better to be out on the waves with Jesus than to be safe and sound in your boat. It is better to be on the waves with Jesus than to be safe and sound in your boat because we're when you're with Jesus, that's where the safety is. That's where the security is. That's where the joy and the comfort is. And he's inviting us to follow him. He's inviting us to grow deeper in our relationship with him. He's inviting us to connect with one another. And we got to get creative with that in this, this season, whether it's a Zoom call, a phone call, a text, whatever it is, but we need to be connected to one another. We need to serve one another. We need to share the love of Jesus to those that God puts in our path. And let us see what God wants to do when we get out of our boat, out of our safety, and we go where Jesus is. That's the invitation. And so I hope that you're going to join us over these next several weeks as we dive into this series, as we learn to be a people who are for KC, 
for this city and community that God has put around us. And we deepen in our discipleship with Jesus. And so, as a preview of what's to come, I want you to take a look at this. Thank you.